Welcome back to the American College of Surgeons, Bulletin Brief from the Front Lines, Surgeons Voices. With me today is my dear friend, Dr. Rick Green. Dr. Green has had many roles in the ACS, including second vice president, including chair of the Commission on Cancer, including editor-in-chief of the AJCC staging manual. But today we're here not to talk about any of those things, but about another one of his hobbies and interests. Welcome, Dr. Green. Steve, it's such a pleasure to be with you. Thanks so much. Well, I love being with you. I, I wish it was in person at the college or, or Sages or elsewhere, but here we are at present uh, still doing things by Zoom. Um, I know you have a very long and distinguished career uh, as a radio personality and MC, including on NPR, um, including with podcasts and, and uh, as attested to by your set up at home there, and, and including, of course, at the famous Sages Sing-Off. So maybe you could share with us a little of your, your background, uh, what you do in, in radio. Well, first of all, Steve, thanks for having this uh, particular uh, interview on uh, podcasts and what podcasts mean for people. Yeah, I, um, I got involved really uh, in the radio work when I was 14 years old. Uh, I had my own show uh, when I was in high school in a little town in Virginia, Petersburg, Virginia, uh, where I grew up. Um, and so, you know, now that was, that was really a rock and roll uh, show. Uh, I'm stuck in the 50s and 60s, of course. And so, uh, yeah, the, it goes way back. Uh, I've always enjoyed communication. Um, obviously, as a surgeon, communication skills are extremely important. I think we always want to push that for our trainees. So over the years, uh, I, I think that background, uh, even in high school, has uh, helped me greatly and um, up to, to present day. Certainly, it's helped you at the Sages Sing-Off, and I've had the pleasure of watching you MC the Sages Sing-Off many times, uh, quite skillfully, I might add. But today, I'd like to talk not about rock and roll, though that'd be interesting, but more about podcasts for surgeons. So maybe you could just explain a little bit about podcasts. Perhaps not every viewer and listener, listener uh, engages in podcasts, and maybe you can enlighten us. Yeah, it's really it's really interesting. The the data from the past year, and of course, you know, the ban pandemic year uh, starting in early 2020 is a strange year, but people were looking for other things to do. But it's interesting. There were over two million podcasts. Uh, that were available to people worldwide in 2020. The number increases every day, of course. So there's the, the point about this is there's so many different things out there. In the United States, it's been said that about 35% of the population of the United States listens to a podcast at least weekly. Most people listen when they're driving a car, which is probably not the greatest idea, but you know, this is the time that people have and when they're working out and so forth. I was delighted uh, along with you to start the podcast corner in our bulletin brief, because I thought it would be nice to highlight different podcasts that people should be aware of, even if, if they're not listeners, maybe they can get involved and have the joy that I've had over the years, not, uh, not just hosting podcasts, but listening to podcasts as well. So uh, I'm delighted that every week now we have our so-called podcast corner. Well, thanks very much. And you know, I know you've got a, a special microphone and headset and, and, and what is the difference in, in that apparatus versus what I'm doing having a camera and a microphone? Well, I really started hosting podcasts about 15 years ago. And this was at uh, a college uh, radio station near me that happened to be the NPR affiliate for classical music. I was the only show on at that station that actually was not a musical show. Uh, it was difficult because I was chair of surgery at that time, running up and down uh, weekly doing a podcast called The Recovery Room, which I'm very pleased that the College of Surgeons sponsored. We actually uploaded and it's still on the website of the college. After that, I started doing some shows at the NPR studio here in Charlotte. But when the pandemic hit, we really had to close down the studio uh, for a while. So I got this equipment here in my office at home. It really has helped me continue hosting these podcasts. 
I do a podcast for SSO, the Society for Surgical Oncology, which is called Speaking of Surge Onc. This is an interesting podcast because it really highlights articles that have been published. And, and a lot of journals, by the way, are going to this format. So if people aren't necessarily reading every article, they can listen to a synopsis or a discussion with the author. And that's what we do. So I've had the pleasure of doing this for my own studio here at home. How long is a typical podcast or is there an ideal length? That is a tremendous question. For me, the ideal length of a podcast is about 15 to 20 minutes. I think listeners tend to get fatigued uh, at very long podcasts. But having said that, if you have a story that's important, people will come back, turn it off. They'll come back and listen again. But what I try to do in my own podcast is keep them about 15 to 20 minutes, which is a, a reasonable length. And when I select podcasts for the podcast corner, this is what I try to do as well. Yeah, that, that certainly makes sense. And that turns out to be about the range for most of these interviews from the frontline surgeon's voices, 15 minutes or a bit more, uh, if you want people to actually sit through them. Perhaps you could share with us some of the more notable uh, surgical podcasts. Uh, and I guess there's two types of podcasts for surgeons. One surgical topics and one, of course, non-surgical topics, like you mentioned, classical music, things that just divert your attention and let you get educated about another era. So if we put aside that latter group, tell us about some surgical podcasts that relate to surgery. Right. And I, I think that's important. One of the podcasts that I found recently is called Legends of Surgery. And remember, these podcasts are all available for free, basically, on most uh, platforms. And, and the ones that I put my own podcasts on are of course, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iTunes, TuneIn. There are many of these platforms that are available. So what I would tell the, uh, the viewer listening to this interview is to just go to one of these, and Apple Podcasts is a fine one, and then search for something of, of interest. Put your either medicine, surgery, whatever. But I think uh, Legends of Surgery is an interesting one because it talks about individuals that we've heard of, but goes in depth. For instance, the one I'm featuring on the podcast corner coming up is about Antonio Scarpa. We're all familiar with Scarpa, the eponymous Scarpa, Scarpa's fascia, but it goes really into depth and it's extremely interesting uh, how this fellow weaves the history uh, of these individuals. Another one that I, I really enjoy is one called palliative care surgery. You know, palliative care uh, is important and important for surgeons. And Dr. Red Hoffman, a fellow of the college, uh, hosts this particular one. And I, I, I've really enjoyed it because it, it, it brings out a lot of the things that we do. There's a wonderful podcast that is done by the Canadian College of Surgeons and the Canadian Surgical Journal, which I think is, is very good for people. And again, you can find all of these on these various platforms. I would urge that people don't necessarily stick to medical-based podcasts because a lot of these other things are extremely interesting. Certainly politics and history are the most common ones that people tend to listen to. But I think for our viewers, there's a wide variety of podcasts available. Thanks very much. I, I appreciate the uh, resources for podcasts for surgeons. The last thing I, I would ask you is how does one find the time? Because I guess you mentioned dri while driving isn't an ideal time, maybe while working out, but we have our obligations at work and many people engage in social media, some more than others, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, whatever. How do you balance all of this out? Well, you can become inundated. That's absolutely sure. Now, you know, when, when podcasting really got its start, we didn't have the social media platforms necessarily that we have now. The data actually shows that, again, aside from just driving a car, when people are working out, when they're walking, these kinds of things, when they're looking for some other activity to do, uh, it's a lot like audiobooks. I think there's so many opportunities for people to listen, certainly when you're on a plane, when people start going back and getting on planes again, that would be another opportunity. I used to do a podcast actually for US Airways, the days when you were able to plug in to your seat and listen to different things on the radio. So I, I did one for the Commission on Cancer and cancer topics for US Airways before it became American Airlines. So these were the kinds of things that people were listening and can listen to. Fantastic. I'd uh, like to give you the opportunity to make any other comments or add any other information before we close. 
the opportunity to let our fellows know about these kinds of things really enhance what we're doing, not only as surgeons, but as physicians and human beings. And I think the uh, bulletin brief is a, another way and through our podcast corner has been another way to get the word out on what's available to people. So I, I really thank you. And I, I thank you for having this video series, because again, this is an, a wonderful opportunity to share a lot of things in a video format, which I think is equally important to podcasting. Thank you for saying so. And equally should definitely not be watched while driving. Definitely. Um, I, <laughs> I appreciate your time and your insights and uh, your impressive track record between the NPR and U.S. Airways and Sages, of course. Uh, many great Bay News. Looking forward to seeing you in person, hopefully in the not too distant future. Thanks, Steve. Stay well. Thank you.